Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, what you have before you today is a claim for the release of funds uh, from the mayor's office uh, to secure those funds from the geothermal asset fund that includes a recommendation from the claim for adjuster uh, for a, to allow the mayor's office to conduct a public health study of up to three years to determine if there are health effects on Puna residents that can be linked to geothermal energy development that will focus on effects on central nervous system, respiratory, and anxiety disorder symptom function. Uh, in, our, in accordance with your uh, ge geothermal asset fund rule, rule number 12, uh, the claim that was filed by the mayor's office was uh, provided to the approved claim adjuster, John Mullen and Company. Um, their review and recommendation is detailed in a letter to the commission dated July 31st, 2014, which is was provided to you earlier within your package. Um, based on that recommendation, the planning director recommends that the Windward Planning Commission accept the claim adjuster's recommendation and to award $750,000 from the Geothermal Asset Fund to conduct a geothermal public health study as it appears fair, reasonable, and appropriate to the description of the claim and will benefit a majority of Puna residents most directly affected by the activity permitted or not permitted by geothermal resource permit number two. So I stand ready to answer any question the commission may have. Oh, and I, I'm sorry, I, I failed to mention. Uh, we have received a number of um, uh, comments and testimonies submitted from the public and I'll, I'll go over them very, very quickly just to identify uh, who provided these comments. Uh, first is from Elizabeth Green. We have another uh, an email from Lindy Fisher. Third, we have an email from David Kaiser. Fourth, an email from Andrea Hans, I believe is the name. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. Uh, fifth is from Lila Marquez, also another email from Gary Zamber, another email from Harry Jim, another email from Darla Cash, and finally, just received this afternoon, is an article regarding gold, silver, and other metals in scale provided by, a, I believe it's a Haley Baldwin. Uh, with that, I do stand ready at this time to ask any questions. Darren, I just wanted to make sure that the, the number, the balance in the fund that's set forth in, the, in our briefing is, is correct. The amount was this also described in the uh, in the claim adjuster's report. We all like to know what the amount was. Sure. Um, anyway, the final was identified as uh, 1.965 million um, with an annual payment of fifty thousand uh, dollars from the from PGB or the industry, I should say. And that number's accurate today. Yes. Any further questions? No. Uh, well, the testimony I'll bring up uh, four at a time. Swear you in. Uh, you meet city name and residents for your testimony, and you have uh, three minutes. Can we have a? Uh, Coming from this seat this way, uh, John Olsen, Renee Saracusa, Gregory Smith, and Joy Polena.
Please raise your hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth on this matter now before the Hawaii County Planning Commission? I do. Ms. to go first. Thank you. My name is John Olson, and I reside at 13-631 Leilani Avenue, Pahoa, 96778. Um, I was there for um, the well cleanouts. I was there for the kick of KS7. I was there for the blowout of KS8 and numerous other ventings that have gone on for the past 25 years, give or take. Um, I hope that you are going to provide the funding necessary for this to move forward, which is not to say I don't have concerns. The adequacy of the funding for a project of this scope and uh, the type of opposition that it is going to need is going to be substantial. We're taking on the oil and gas industry, the wastewater industry, the meat packing industry, uh, and several other uh, chemical process, manufacturing processes that emit substantial quantities of H2S. I, walk, I worked with Dr. Legator when he was here as part of his five community across the United States epidemiological survey. Dr. Legator was one of the premier epidemiolog epidemiologists in the world at the time that he showed up to do this study. Um, and the kind of flack that he took came all the way from Washington. He completed the study. He is deceased now. Um, this is not going to be a small undertaking. We wouldn't be having this discussion if we lived in Europe. The European Union does not allow the kinds of levels that are allowed in the United States in terms of exposure rates to us. It is well understood. Um, don't be surprised if they come back from Walmart. They're probably going to need it. Thank you. Renee Shirakusa, 15-167 South Road, Ka'ohe Homesteads, Bahoa, Hawaii, 96778. I've taken a break from evacuating to come here and talk to you. I was, um, I remember when the asset fund was formed, and the most important to my mind and the primary purpose of the fund was to, quote, mitigate negative impacts from geothermal development, unquote. But it never stated what those negative impacts were. As I see it, they can be two types of impacts. One is to property and one is to people. I don't think there's anything else around that there could be one or the other. So the, um, the, the problem with the, the way it was drawn up, one of the problems was that the, um, the fund required the use of a claims adjuster. But in order to, and claims adjusters can, can make valuations on, on property, that's what they're trained for. They don't have the skills or the training to make these kind of evaluations on health impacts on people in the community. <coughs> and that's one of the reasons that we need this health fund, this, this study. There have been studies in the past, the Legator study check, uh, studied um, central nervous system effect. It didn't study anything to do with um, with reproductive problems in women or with respiratory problems or like that. It wasn't a complete study. It was criticized because of that. It was also criticized because the control group was later discovered to be really another impacted group and not as impacted as the immediate neighbors, but still they were, they were downwind and that was Hawaiian beaches. So, you know, what we really need in order for us to make decisions and make adequate decisions about the health and, and of the community and to and to in order to impact mitigate the impacts is to have a proper health study that everyone knows was done properly 
impartially and totally pono, a study that is complete. And this is what the working group recommended. I sat on that working group, although I'm not testifying for them. I'm testifying uh, for Malama Opina. Uh, I think it would benefit everybody in the community and, and agencies who have to make recommendations. I think everyone needs to know exactly what's happening there and um, requesting that you approve this appropriation from the asset fund. Thank you. Gregor Todd Smith, 131263 Kahokai Street, Hoho, Hawaii, States. Um, this is 30 years in coming. Uh, this community was basically abandoned by state regulatory agencies as well as the County of Hawaii agencies. Basically, the state brought in hoping to bring in geothermal development on the health, safety, and lives of the people. At the state level, we do not have any protection whatsoever against the excesses of this type of industry whatsoever. We, we don't even have contested case hearing rights. Those are taken away, I think, in 1997. There's no other industry in the state of Hawaii that has that type of protection against scrutiny for the public, as well as redress for our, uh, you know, for our concerns. This has to happen. We are now actually being threatened by more geothermal development. We do not have any base studies, either on the quality of our land, our water, our air, nothing. We have people living on catchment. Our water supply can be threatened by these by these uh, discharges from the plant, these toxic discharges. We've had the recent blowout again, third time in three years, that people have been negatively affected. The state, nor the county, nor even the EPA has ever come down and truly done anything to investigate our concerns. We, we are a neighbor of ours. We met in Walmart yesterday while we were doing our business here in Hilo. And she was having a hard time breathing the night of the blowout, the night of the hurricane, or the night of the hurricane. And she could not get out. And what, what was told to her was, well, we can't get you out. So she had to wait 12 hours. She finally got out to get medical treatment. And a friend of ours, a young man and his family, were actually told by the fire department on the Long Island Boulevard that Guess what? Uh, you can't get out of here because of the fallen trees. The young man, of course, is a trucker and a heavy equipment operator. He had his three-quarter ton truck with his two-year-old son in the front seat, daughter, excuse me. And um, he told the fire department, well, guess what? I'm going around. He took his family of six up Lilani Boulevard with his chainsaw, chainsaw to path through, with his chains, pulled the trees aside, and made a path out. There, you know, we have to have health studies, and we have to have this done. This is 32 years late. We might even have, we could even prove deaths on this one, particularly in the 91 blowout. Mahal. Mr. Chairman and members of the board, uh, thank you for letting us speak. I've done my ranting and raving at home. I've done my cussing. I won't cuss in front of you. Um, I've been in Hawaii, uh, let's see, I've been uh, 1983, on November 18th, and I have not left, and I won't be. I'll stay right here. My address is 13 1263 Kampokai Street. Mr. Smith and I own a home together in the mainland states. Uh, we've been there since 1998. Previous to that, I was in uh, Kalapana City Estates. It's misnamed. It has nothing to do with Kalapana. It's four miles from Kalapana on the coast. During the 1991 blowout, we were severely impacted. I called the police department at 8 o'clock in the morning because I woke up to hearing a roar, and I was exhibiting, I didn't know it at the time, classic hydrogen sulfide serious symptoms. And when I called the police department, they said they have a small problem with PGB and hung up in my ear. The way the wind blows, 
uh, when PGB Puerto Thermal Venture was venting, exploding, had wet, wet, uh, well clean outs, thank you, uh, et cetera, the wind would blow it down the coast and drop it right on top of Seafood, drop it right on top of Okinika. We were ser more seriously impacted there than we are now at the top of Leilani Estates, with the top, you know, the top of the hill, Leilani is a hill. A long hill. <coughs> this health study, the money for this health study must be appropriated because we are overdue to be recognized as being seriously impacted, not just by um, uncontrolled releases, ventings, well cleanouts. We are being impacted and have been impacted for many decades now by long-term, low-level hydrogen sulfide poisoning. Uh, Dr. Kay Kilburn, who died, uh, it's really strange, he died the night of that blowout on August 7th, but he was in California, and he was top grade in finding hydrogen sulfide poisoned communities and helping them to correct it when industry and politics refused to help them. Help them got it done. Dr. Legator was here. I was part of that health study right after the 91 boat blowout. And the feds put such pressure on that man, it was unreal. They threatened to cut his funding. He uh, was a University of Texas professor. Uh, I am not a, a, a conspiracy theorist, but I'll tell you something. There is a conspiracy here, a big business and some politicians. We have to cut through it. Our lives are at stake. I have been impacted by this corner geothermal venture for too long. I want it to stop. Please help us. Thank you. Uh, I'm from this seat here. Could I have uh, Dr. Ivan? George, Dries, Stephanie Dries, and Ray Allen. Dr. Roy Lozano, uh, I live in uh, 13th S6350 Hickey Road, a mile from the uh, geothermal plant downhill. I've been in Hawaii for 26 years, 11 in Pahoa, uh, Pohiki Road, I'm a chiropractor there in the town. Um, I cannot think of a better way to spend the geothermal asset fund than do a health study. And I think I heard the planning directors agree with that as well as the adjuster for insurance company. So I hope that you, by the end of this meeting, will uh, agree with that. Um, I have been affected by the uh, H2S uh, numerous times. Uh, driving by, I'll smell it and immediately have a headache uh, and a sore throat. The evening of the her uh, tropical storm cell at 7.50, my uh, throat started burning and my lungs started uh, climbing down. And uh, I was, there was four of us in the house and I was the only one who had those symptoms. But I, I had pneumonia as a young child, and uh, I feel I'm a little more sensitive, so that was maybe why I experienced that. Um, many of my patients uh, experienced the same thing, and when I went to the health clinic and asked the, if they had been noticing both the uh, Bay Clinic and the Pahok Punam Community Medical Center, they said they were noticing an uptake in respiratory issues, so I think it would be valuable to take in some of that data. Um, you know, up until uh, two and a half years ago, I didn't really notice that many effects from the plant, but that was when they began their last drilling that they did for 120 days. And, uh, you know, the first thing you notice when they start that is a, a vibration at night. And uh, you're in bed with, well, in my case, I'm in bed with my wife. And um, when, you, when I felt that vibration, it is quite disturbing. And when it goes on for 120 days, I would say that there were psychological stresses that I experienced. Um, and I imagine other folks who live closer than that uh, do as well. So um, I believe that when the egg land was turned over 30 years ago to an industrial use, uh, you didn't take, they did not take into consideration the, the fact that we would be the largest 
and fastest growing area in, in the islands. So here we are now with many more people living there, many more possibilities for harm. So I'm just uh, hoping that um, as a taxpayer for 26 years in this island, that you uh, do the right thing and use these monies for the right way. Uh, in any community, the safety of the people is the utmost importance, and I, I hope that you uh, take that into consideration when you make a decision. Mahalo. My name is George Duvers. Uh, we live on the driveway 13-841 Pobuiki, within a mile of the geothermal plant. Um, I've heard a lot of awkward testimonies. Why we need this uh, health project to investigate the health concerns of everyone in the area, as well as our children, children's children, and everybody else that has children in the future in the community, for both short-term and long-term health reasons. In our case, I'd like to uh, just give an example of how it was. We had no clue that the geothermal plant had a problem the night of the hurricane. Around 7.30, we heard a big roar like a jet plane. I'm curious to know why a jet plane would be flying during a hurricane. But within 10 minutes after that incident, we all in the household of six people at the time uh, started smelling a sulfuric kind of smell, developed, all developed headaches, um, lethargy, respiratory situations, people started coughing, and some of the people in my family have been coughing for, since then, I've developed these sharp little pains in my stomach, which happened starting the next morning and have still been going on. And following the advice that we heard at a geothermal meeting of follow-up to the hurricane of people that had some symptoms, we went to the ER room of the Hilo Hospital along with several other people for testing. Uh, tests were conducted. And this was several weeks ago. We called and they said they still don't have results for us. Um, also, they suggested we go to the Pahoa lab the next morning and have urine tests done and sent to a lab. We checked in on those results, both at the lab and at the Puna Bay Clinic, and they say, the Puna Bay Clinic said they don't have any record of those tests, and the lab said that they were probably lost. They were sent to a, to a lab on the mainland, and they were issued, uh, was recommended to the ER room by a Dr. Uh, Q-U-I-R-K, an MD in Waimea. They had come to one of the meetings, and she said this is a specific lab that would test for the sulfide poisoning that we experienced. Um, the lab in Pahoa said that um, uh, those tests were lost because that lab didn't exist. <laughs> we called the doctor back, and she said, of course they exist. They have 11 branches, and she keeps using them on a weekly basis. So we're a little concerned about how that bit of health uh, information can get lost, as well as, like I said, um, proper health study and regulation, perhaps, to keep these kind of health symptoms and allow us to live in paradise instead of something much worse. Thank you. Hello, my name is Stephanie Dugas. Um, same address is uh, 13841 Hawaii. Um, my husband and I are um, three children um, and two visitors from New Zealand were at our house at the time and we were saying that we heard this jet roar, we went outside, it wasn't raining at the time, it was just a lot of wind and when we heard it that it was just coming from one direction, which was the geothermal, we then realized that that had gone off. Um, we, it was, it was kind of a miracle because we had no, we have no cell phone reception where we are, but we do have internet. And at that time, the internet went off. We had no way of communicating with anyone of where we were. You know, this is new technology, but you see it doesn't work when you go down. And uh, Aloha Broadband had gone down. Um, my daughter-in-law had her cell phone on. She had a different carrier. A text message came in and said that the geothermal had, um, had went off and to evacuate. And this was about maybe 10 o'clock at night. And at that point, we were, could hear all the trees going off like firecrackers. 
And we knew that we wouldn't be able to get out. It took us two days just to get out of our driveway. We were stuck there. We couldn't get out along with other people. And luckily we had a, our neighbor had a chainsaw and a bulldozer, which got us out. We did go to the meeting, like we said. We went and had blood tests and all the tests to show that we, were, we didn't have the flu at the ER room. Um, that was done on the 12th, and here it is already the 4th. We went yesterday to the Pahoa Clinic, and they said they still don't have the results back from our test, or you know, for the urine test or the blood test. And this is over you know, almost a month now. Um, we, other people that I've talked to have had worse problems. Um, you know, I hear some testimonies where people went to sleep about 9 o'clock and couldn't wake up until 9 o'clock the next day. This is serious. I mean, you know, I've heard of other people that have died during this time. So, you know, I'm, you know, my health is in, I'm in good health pretty much. And, you know, I came down with headaches, sore throat, and, um, and it's, I would hope that you approve of this study. Uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Greg Adams. Uh, I'm a commercial farmer. I uh, reside at uh, Lager Tree Park subdivision, which is uh, located at my mark was 3, Route 132, kind of indirectly across the street from Geothermal on the north of the west side. Uh, the night of uh, August 7th, uh, when Giselle hit, um, it was approximately about 7.30, like, reviewed my text messages uh, to a, a buddy down the block we were keeping in touch with. I texted him and said, hey, geothermal just blew. Uh, was very concerned uh, at that point. The noise and the stress of just the hurricane coming toppled on top of the geothermal blowout was just absolutely nerve shattering. Um, so, uh, and then, now I'm on the kind of the upwind side, if you will, of geothermal, but all of a sudden, in the hurricane, these winds are traveling around, uh, who knows how they can travel, but I'm smelling the rotten eggs, the typical hydrogen sulfide smell. I also uh, had uh, health effects scratchy throat, burning eyes, headache. Uh, was told by HPD uh, when I called the 911 that uh, we were aware of it. There's no health safety risk at that time. Uh, later on, uh, I was texted by my, my buddy and he says, B-97 is releasing a uh, statement that it is an uncontrolled blowout and you should evacuate uh, if you're being affected by the release of the gas. Um, this was uh, almost an absurd thing because there was no way to get out of, of the area. Uh, there was no way to leave the area. Uh, now, I may take a little different stance on this. I believe that there is a lot of public testimony about the health effects of geothermal around. We all, we, a few of us have given video testimony of what we're feeling. These funds may be directed, I feel, in a different area in regards to maybe mitigating the effects of a blowout from geothermal. I just feel that, that you can't guess the community uh, when it when the facility fails. So that's my contention, and uh, please forgive me, I'm new to this arena, so a little nervous, and uh, I just feel that this was, uh, we feel like canaries in the coal mine, and we are getting gas. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, could I have, uh Russell Rudeman, starting on the side. John, Matt, Judith, Mira, and Paul Kendall. Uh, Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm 
tell the truth on this matter now before the Hawaii County Planning Commission? State your name and residence. Thank you. My name is Russell Luderman. I reside at 15937 Paradise Alakai in uh, APP. I'm a state senator from Puna District, but I'm testifying as an individual. And I do want to thank you for the opportunity to um, speak to you. I support this uh, appropriation of funds for the health study with some concerns, which I'll try to explain. The community deserves a comprehensive health study. In fact, it's at least 20 years overdue, but you know, better late than never. Uh, it's very important that I, I do also think that this is a legitimate and appropriate use of the geothermal asset funds. I think it's important for you folks to insist that this study have legitimacy, neutrality, objectivity, that it be scientific and not politicized. It's a lot of money to spend and it's a very important issue. And you know, those things have been lacking in the past. Without those characteristics to the study, I don't think it's worth, I don't think it's a waste of money. I think we should insist on those or not bother. Public confidence in the study is very, very important. I urge you to look to Punapono Alliance as the de facto experts on this, situ on this situation. And I, I urge you to consider their input on how the study is done. They're not just activists, but they've participated in all the meetings and all the studies so far, and they're, they're actually the experts on this issue. And like it or not, they're the only, the only group that the community trusts at this point. PGV, which, I used to ha which I've had high regard for over the years, lost a lot of credibility in this most recent issue, in this most recent incident. Particularly in the, in the disparity between the official summary of what happened and what the community actually saw, felt, and smelled and experienced. There's a huge discrepancy. And like every other event, there was no evacuation plan, there was no notification officially to the community. The only thing that was different this time was they did hire a PR firm and they did put out a much more professional press release of their version of what happened. But all the more reason why this study, if we do it, needs to have legitimacy and needs to have the public confidence. My concerns are primarily have to do with uh, the, the incident that just happened. I think that while we are, as we're currently in the process of an analyzing the health effects from the August 7th incident, I think you should consider temporarily postponing this study, simply to take into account the things we're learning based on this very dramatic incident. And currently there are people really hurting as a result of it, and they need to be helped. But more importantly, if the question is, are there health effects from this geothermal plant, the answer is already, is already before us. I'm sorry, I, I will summarize very quickly. I believe that the RFP may need revision and it may need to be fine-tuned based on the information we gather from, the, from what's currently going on in the community. We cannot nor, ignore the reality on the ground that serious health effects exist and must be addressed. Thank you very much for your time. Aloha, my name is Jeffrey Last. I've lived at 13 1267 Malama Street for 30 years. Uh, just for all you folks here, uh, you know, when I first moved here, I thought geothermal was wonderful. It was great. It was everything all we're always going to have it. And I think this is real important to say to you to get to, so you get to understand this. And I, I went for seven years, I still believed it was great. My son used to ride home on the school bus and get poisoned on the way home, and I didn't know he was getting poisoned. The health department said everything was fine. Don't worry about a thing. So comes the blowout. Boom, the light goes on for Jeffrey. Jeffrey goes out and gets an education and finds out that the health department had been lying to us. You know, call any one of them to their face liars. I don't care who they are. We were not told the truth. And this is very important to understand for you folks. You don't live out there. You haven't been through all of this. We're not making this stuff up. You're going to hear from a lot more people that just got poisoned here. We have the health effects now. We do need this health study, but we have the health effects. 
They're right here now. This is what we need to study now. Gary Gill, our wonderful clean air branch, said, oh, there's nothing happened out in Pune. Here's the health department guy. The head of the health department goes on TV and in the newspapers and said nothing happened to us. This is what we're up against. Here we have Kay Kilburn, the guy that we wanted as a community to do this study because we know he hasn't been bought and paid for. He's dead. I mean, we want this study to happen. It's fair. We're not an expendable community, folks. This, this company in Helco, they made a decision to keep this plant open and they disregarded the safety of our community to keep the electricity flowing. And they'll give you that whole story. He's here today and he'll tell you that stuff. Really, folks, we need this. We need this very much. We need this health study, but please, maybe postpone it and get all the facts of what happened now. What happened now happened now. The people who are in the room, they're not, they haven't moved to the mainland. They're here. They're here, and it's very important that this get addressed. Geothermal is not clean, it is not green, and it is not renewable. We have better ways here. Let's put this thing, let's put this thing to rest. Make them, make them follow the regulations. I mean, we don't even have monitors. The monitors went out. And then, one last thing, the monitors went out, they were gone during the storm. Then after the storm, PGV went ahead and they did their clean out with no monitors. And people got gassed again driving by that plant. They got poisoned again and there was no monitors. Thank you. If you would have asked me maybe four or five years ago on whether PGB gassing people had any effect on their health, I would have taken it out with a grain of salt and said, well, perhaps not. I really don't know how people live. But with this last blowout, I was in the middle of it. And it sounded like a jet airplane line. A jet airplane had landed in my backyard. It was so very loud. And I went to investigate the sound. And opening my door, I got a huge blast of all the toxins that they were putting out. I really didn't smell much of anything. I didn't smell the rotten neck smell. Um, there were trees cracking everywhere. I was tired from the expectation of the storm. By nine o'clock, I was knocked out unconscious. I did not hear any of the storm. I am a mother of three. Moms, we, part of our brains sleep and part of our brains can hear a pin drop. I didn't hear huge trees falling in my driveway, huge Odea trees, and, and Albizia trees are in my driveway. When I woke up in the morning to see what was going on, I missed all this, I couldn't do it. And I woke up and I was so tipsy. I do not drink, I do not do drugs. I, I barely do any coffee because it gives me a headache. But I feel like I, I've been drunk. I still feel somewhat drunk. Oh, like there's a part of my brain that is just not quite connecting that I have to write myself notes. And I feel uneasy and just a little bit uh, disconnected. I also couldn't sleep <coughs> for five days because I had this dry cough all night long. Oh, I was, I had two guests in my house who came uh, to stay with me for the storm. These guests also had headaches. We, none of us heard the storm. We couldn't believe that we did not hear all of those trees fall down. And a part of my house was inundated when the strongest of the storm came around. And I didn't feel that. My cat 
walks wobbly after the storm, like she, like her hips are a little dislocated. Um, yeah. So from the headaches, from the cough, uh, the raspy throat, and they poisoned us four times after the blowout with smaller blowout. Yeah, just a minute. If another country was to come and poison us in the way that they did, we would be at war right now with them. We cannot let these people get away with this. Thank you so very much for your time. Aloha. Aloha, my name is Paul Kaikendall. I live at 135628 Malama Key Road in Pahoa. I'd like to begin by thanking the members of this planning commission for considering the health study funding. As important as a timely study is, I recommend that it be put on hold while an investigation of the health impacts of the recent PGB leaks during Hurricane Nazelle be conducted by an independent agency. Gleaning the facts from this most recent incident will inform Hawaii County about priorities for the health study that is proposed. I'm guessing that the health study should be expanded to include acute exposures like the one uh, many of us experienced. Unfortunately, Hurricane Azelle was a perfect storm of high winds, giant albizias, PGB contractual obligations, an inadequate emergency response plan, and Hawaii Department of Health indifference. I live one mile from the plant. My wife, my 75-year-old mother-in-law, and I all became nauseous that evening. That was before we heard the reports of the leak by civil defense. We could not leave our farm due to downed trees on the road. We all suffered from headaches and lethargy for the following week. Imagine spending the day preparing for a hurricane, and just when you come inside to take shelter, you are poisoned by H2S and other heavy metals, and you cannot leave due to falling trees. This is what happened to the people who lived near PG PGB that night. PGB said that the system worked as designed, and we followed all the permits. And yet, 100 people or more were made sick, including elderly, pregnant women, and children. There's something wrong with the system where people are made sick, and the company says, we followed all the permits. Our system worked as designed. The county bears particular responsibility for those who were made sick in this boom because the county issued the GRP permit to PGB. Also, the mayor vetoed a bill to improve the emergency uh, response plan for PGB. That was in 2012. For these reasons, the mayor and the county should request that the Center for Disease Control and the EPA conduct a thorough investigation of this incident so that it is not repeated again. Senator Schatz has already made this request in a letter to the CDC and the EPA. I hope the county and the mayor will show similar leadership on this issue before it happens again. We don't need more people to get sick and possibly people to die because of a county permitted organization that is willing to put people at risk for the sake of profit. Mahalo for your consideration. I have a Suzanne Hillier. Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth on this matter now before the Hawaii County Planning Commission? Mr. Please, please state your name and your Good afternoon. My name is Suzanne Walter. I live at 13 5628 Moama Key Place, Oklahoma. Um, so, I live with my family approximately one mile from PGV, and I am one of the people who got sick and trapped in our home during the storm on August 7th when PGV went offline releasing geothermal steam. So, the uh, ORMAT and PGV PR says that PGV operated as it's supposed to. 
However, it's one thing for me and my husband to be poisoned. It's yet another thing for that to happen to my mother, who is 75, and my neighbors, children under the age of 10, and all the other vulnerable people in the community. So it's supposed to be hydrogen sulfide uh, that's monitored uh, according to the Department of Health state um, permit. Uh, though there's actually a complete lack of a monitoring system. Um, well, what is also in the steam that's released? We have no data on exposure, so it's very difficult to do a good health study and find a relationship between what people are experiencing and what they've actually been exposed to. So, I don't know if you got a copy of this. Uh, it's a paper that was published back in 2008 by some consultants for PGV. It's kind of an interesting paper. There's some information in here that it's relevant. It, I can't actually get any data from it specifically, but this paper um, is looking at uh, metals that they got out of scale from the pipes. So this is uh, metals in the uh, brine and the steam, and they contain uh, copper, zinc, lead, arsenic, selenium, cadmium, molybdenum, antimony, tellurium, and thallium. There's actually more. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in that brine, and there is not a way that they're actually taking it out so that the community are not exposed to it. And there's no data to show what people are being exposed to. So originally I have been a supportive of the community funding a health study um, out of the royalty fund. Uh, but after this latest release, I think it's premature until we have an independent inquiry. We really do need to take a look at what happened in this latest event. And rushing into, and I know it's not a rush because it's been 30 years, but the health study as it stands is going to need some uh, work to really include all of the things that we've been exposed to. So thank you for your time. Go ahead. My name is Haley Baldwin. My address is 13-699 Leilani Avenue. I'm 0.7 miles from the geothermal plant on the GPS. What happened was basically our mini Fukushima. And we can't allow that to happen to us. We have to take responsibility for people's health. It's um, a double standard to say that we cannot prevent lava flow because we're um, cultural sensitivity, but yet we can extract it and poison people and gas people. That's a double standard. It's punching holes in Pele. In my theory, it is attracting the lava. If we don't do something about it, then Pele will. People are sick. I moved here in February from the North Shore of Hawaii. I never knew how blessed I was to breathe clean air. I bought an acre thinking that I could have my first child. I had a spontaneous abortion and it was attributed to the geothermal plant. This study, although it focuses on the nervous system, the respiratory system, and the anxiety disorder, it opens the door to look at all the effects. During Hurricane Azel, I was in my home. The plant blew up. There was nothing controlled about it. It had more than one explosion. I faced towards it and tucked and covered, and it made this awful sound. I feared for my life. It didn't stop. It kept going. Then immediately the rotten egg smell comes. And at that point, I began to have all the neurological effects. A headache, um, 
poor concentration, even my personality has been affected. I'm more irritable. Um, I have uh, a, a, a attention span. My verbal recall has been affected. I've only lived there since February. February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. I'm already, every day, headaches. I'm a completely healthy person. I was a summer hire for the county of Hawaii and I did a respiratory, um, a respirator test to prove that I had the lung capacity to wear a respirator. And my lung function has already been decreased. I cannot dive as much as I used to. And it's all, it, this, I have a degree in psychology from the University of Hawaii. This can be conducted um, unbiased, unskewed, with correct information, it can be done. Even a university student could do it. We, to make it, and as I summarize, we need the professionals to do it, but we need it to be unbiased. When they teach you in science, you don't skew the data. Their monitors are not accurate. When I go online, when I smell a smell, that's when the website is unavailable. Okay? So I can't even monitor when I should leave, how I should leave. So it doesn't take a long to have this to have health effects. Not, and the effects that it's having on our children and our future unborn children. This study is so vital. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Shana Ritsima. I live at 13-667 uh, Hinalo Street, uh, Pahoa, Nesilani Puna Gardens, very close to Geothermal. Um, I'm a single mother of four children. I love the area that I live in. It's a beautiful place. There's all kinds of uh, families and elderly people and children. And uh, I believe that we are being poisoned by geothermal. Um, I was affected by geothermal because of the blowout on August 7th. Um, I was sick. All my children got sick. We had the respiratory. Um, also, what I noticed is that I had tingling in my arms for about a week, a week and a half. Uh, they would fall asleep easily. They would be tingly. I wasn't sure what was going on. And then at this last PGV meeting that they had recently, I realized that like these were symptoms of uh, the hydrogen sulfide poisoning. So uh, I do believe that I'm being affected. I've talked to all kinds of different kinds of people in the community, and they all feel that they are being affected. Uh, I believe that also I've just been told by Mike, the one that runs the PVG, that um, there are lots of flammable materials being held at the plant, and currently there's a lava flow right outside Pahoa, and I believe this is immediate, that we need to uh, shut down the geothermal or uh, be very, uh, get these people to move out their uh, chemicals or these explosive things. I mean, this is a community of people. Our lives are at stake. Our safety is important. I'm a taxpayer. I pay my HELCO bill. I don't support geothermal. I want me and my children to be safe. I need to live in that area. It's an affordable place. I don't want to have to move. Please protect the people. People are more important than money. Thank you. Aloha. You've heard some pretty compelling testimony today. My name is Robert Petrici. I live at 13-430 Pohoiki Road, about a mile from the PGB power plant. I've lived near that power plant since 1981, before it was, it was built in 1990, before that was HGPA. Um, Harry Kim, Dwayne Kanuha, Renee Syracusa, John Olson, Russell Rudiman are all people that have been here from the very beginning. Um, 
So uh, first on the on the the uh, health study, I originally I was on the mayor's Ad, the Adler committee, the mayor's committee, and I originally supported the RFP. However, things have changed, and as a member of the uh, mayor's health study group, I'm perplexed that I was not allowed to see the RFP. The RFP was I was told that I couldn't see it, and uh, so it's really hard for me to come here and support an RFP that is secret from the committee that supposedly designed it. I also think things have changed in that the, the, uh, the Adler Committee found that there were health impacts related to geothermal prior to 1991, but that after 1991 it was inconclusive if there had been health impacts. Uh, I believe that with the latest accident and the 100 plus people now that are telling you that they are having health impacts, um, that it has been established that there are health impacts since 1991. So to design a study to determine if there are health impacts seems to me to be premature. I think we need to do an investigation of what happened uh, similar to what Goddard and Goddard did after the geothermal blowout in order to design a health study that will actually get to the root of the problem. We've already, I believe, as a member of the health study group, I, uh, I believe we've already determined that there are health impacts related to geothermal. So I don't think we have money to waste doing something that I think we already know. Um, I'm going to switch, Now I have a lot of things I, I could say. Uh, the Department of Health website has never worked, ever. Um, PGV says the emergency response system operated as designed. It's designed to save the plant at the expense of the community. That's unacceptable. The GRP needs, the geothermal resource permit from the county needs to address that. So does the State Department of Health. Um, why is there nowhere for geothermal victims to go for help outside of Punapono Alliance? None of these people can, f I asked the mayor to please come out and help us. And he told me, you just make sure you document this very well. And that is unacceptable. Um, I want to show you some newspaper articles. Nineteen seventy seven. Forty people said they were sick from geothermal well testing. I believe this was in nineteen ninety two. Harry Kim wanted to put in a real emergency response plan. He refused to sign off on the restarting of the PGV plant after the blowout because the, he had five conditions, and they weren't that stringent, that he wanted met before they could restart that plant. They overrode him, and, the, and that was when they decided that the mayor is actually the head of civil defense, not here at Kim. And they overrode him, and they restarted the plant without any emergency response plan that was functional, as we saw in this last storm, any monitoring system that is functional. There's no data. And, and you have the Department of Health coming in public on television and in the media and saying there's no way those people got sick and he has no data to make that statement and the department of health has done that since hgpa and i don't know why they do it but it seems to me that they believe their job is to protect pgv and and that we're expendable as a community and that's the only way i can see it the asset fund in 1990 i believe residents blast the new geothermal asset fund. She's asking me to stop, and I, I want to say that I'm testifying as a resident and as president of Punapono, can I get extra time? Because you will not believe lethal levels released. I mean, every one of these, the HCPA closed by emergency decree. I mean, on and on and on and on. And here we are with another hundred people. It's time that we do something about it. Thank you. I've got a question of you, sir. Um, I, I take seriously our Kuliano over this fund, and I agree with everyone that's testified here that we need to use this money um, in the best interest of the people that are being impacted. Um, now, I've heard a couple of times today, I think Senator Ruderman, too, mentioned a... Uh, some kind of a proposal or a plan to make sure that if we fund this study that it's going to do what, what it is that needs to be done down there. 
I, I don't want to just burn up seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. I I um, I voted against the meta study because I thought it was just a study of a bunch of studies, and, and I'm I'm tired of burning up money. I agree to to no good end. Um, so I'd be interested in your thoughts about how do we. Uh, uh, how do we investigate the impacts of this most recent uncontrolled release, and how do we use that information to better formulate the proposal for to the extent that a medical study is what we decide to do? I appreciate you asking the question and your position. And I agree That's with partly you. to give you some more time too. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> okay. Now I get it. Um, so I think Tom Travis can answer that question better than I can. Um, but like I said, as the health committee, when we looked at the issue, and we spent over a year looking at the issues, uh, the study was designed to determine if there were health impacts. And I think that it's pretty clear that there are. Um, and so I think that we need to go back and, and, and we need to have an a independent engineering uh, firm come in and do a study. Goddard & Goddard was an engineering company and after the blowout they came in and they did a great study and they made some really good recommendations. If you read the report, the problem was not, they didn't get implemented. It just got put on a shelf and everything just went forward as normal. So I really believe that's what we need because the only information you have in this situation, you have the polluter, PGB, reporting the pollution. The Department of Health made that statement because they called PGB and PGB told them there was no problem. And that is how it's always been. Um, so we need some kind of outside oversight, an independent investigation. We cannot depend on PGB to investigate themselves. And at this point, that's all I see. I hope that answers your question. It, I'm happy to elaborate if you have anything specific. You know, I'm just, um, I, I'm more concerned with the, the process, the procedure, you know, on, and hard and fast. How do we, how do we put that in place? In, in theory, that makes sense to me, but. I think Tom Travis can answer that question. He'll be coming up next week. I think he's the, he's an engineer. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have uh, Mike, you know, Tom Travis, Laura Travis, and Dave, um, yes, sir. Hi. Hi. Excuse me. Could you all please raise your hand? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth on this matter now before the Hawaii County Planning Commission? I do. Speak to me, my resident. Uh, my name is uh, Mike Hale. I live at uh, 13 3385 Ho'o Kupu in Leilani within the one mile zone. Um, I don't understand why we need a health study at this point. I mean, it's, it's obvious that there's health effects. We've got over 100 people, including myself, that were affected in this last time. I mean, I've been suspicious of some other things that happened over the years, you know, the grogginess, waking up in the, in the morning or something like that. But this one was just so obvious with uh, hearing the noise, smelling it, feeling the effects, passing out for 12 hours, waking up groggy, feeling uh, us the... Um, numbness in the arms, the chest. My girlfriend had the chest thing, still has a cough. We both still have light cough in the lungs. X-rayed, nothing found. Take antibiotics, nothing found. Strep throat, no, no flu. I've got my medical uh, reports in. There was no sickness. Everything points to something that can't be determined, but all the effects point that it can be caused by this. Um, so that's what I felt, and we've got all these things going on in the neighborhood. I, you know, I have a job. I don't want to be here and uh, be, you know, talking bad about geothermal. It should be an awesome thing, it's, but in this case, it's not. Um, I talked to a few neighbors uh, that aren't 
in the studies that have been done, or in the data that's been out already, uh, with, the, uh, with uh, you know five kids, their kids all felt effects and got headaches and all this. That hasn't been taken into account of these hundred people already. Those neighbors next to them, the old man who went to the hospital, he's very private, doesn't want anybody to know his business, on oxygen ever since the event. The guy who, who uh, got sick at the night of the event and uh, died a week later. You know, nobody can say, you know, was it this? Who knows? But why do I have to worry that maybe it was? I know my effect was, you know, this was obvious that I got sick from this thing. Uh, let me make this quick because I got one minute here, but I dropped off some papers there for you. And uh, it's my options for, you know, uh, getting away from it. Uh, the one is uh, part of their permit. And it says that, uh, let's see, geothermal, uh, anybody within the radius is supposed to uh, notify uh, the residents. Uh, 24 hours in advance. I've lived there 14 years. I've never been notified. I don't know anybody who's ever been notified. I know that there's gas been released, but nobody's ever been notified. This is in their permit. So they're in violation of their permit. They're also supposed to offer us the option to leave at their expense. There's no other additional fund. It's their expense. Uh, $100 per resident or $200 per household. 150 if, if it impacts your business. Never been offered that. In fact, back in 2002, I was told there was no such thing when I called the plant. Um, the next page on here is uh, I filed a complaint with the zoning on this. The next page on there is the fact that I tried to go for the relocation, geothermal relocation. The first time I was denied, the second time I got it, it offered me 100000 less than what I owe on my house. These are my options to get out of the area. I can't. The night of the event, I couldn't get out due to the trees. That's it. Thank you. I'm uh, Tom Travis. I'm a retired naval submariner who served in the Navy for 30 years operated nuclear propulsion plants. I'm a retired government service director for studies for the Joint Center of Operations Analysis at the Department of Defense. I was also one of the geothermal public health assessment working group. I live at 14256 Papaya Farms Road in Lower Puna. On August 7th, the PGD geothermal plant released a significant amount of hydrogen sulfide gas into the atmosphere beginning at 7.26 p.m. Shortly after that time, many residents in the surrounding area became sick. My wife, Laura, who is next to me, has begun the process of establishing documentation packages for those that have come forward. I made a map to show some of what we have learned to this point. If you examine the map, the blue dots are the 52 residents that I that have told us where they live and what their symptoms are, and that we have verified their symptoms started at 7:26 p.m. So the 50, the 52 that we've evaluated out of 109, we have to look at the others yet. Those 52, as you can see, are spread along here. The red dots on the map are people that my wife and I have classified as having significant lethargy. This is not a medical term, and I'll tell you what it means. It means that they either couldn't control when they went to sleep, or after they went to sleep, they couldn't be awakened. So if someone fell asleep, and their wife or children tried to awaken them, and they couldn't be awakened for a significant amount of time, that's the red, that they would get a red dot. Additionally, a red dot could be if they fell asleep at a totally inappropriate time, walking to do something and lay down and go to sleep at that time. 
In other words, the medical term might be that they passed out. So those are the red dots. As you can see, there is, are quite a number of people there. These are the symptoms, eight experience of the 52, eight experience severe lethargy, 31 experience lethargy, 14 mental fog, five cardiovascular, including uh, 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 heart pains or chest pains, respiratory, including severe uh, shortness of breath, headaches, eyes, including not being able to see right. That's more than just eye irritation. That means seeing double. Uh, not everybody, some of it was eye irritation. And there was one example of skin. 15 people experienced nausea. Could you hand that to him? You could, if any of you are interested, you, you, this can be passed around. It's a little bigger than the piece of paper. Many people, including from, uh, many, some from the Department of Health, have tried to dismiss these health issues. One was a statement in the Honolulu Star Advertiser before these people could even get to a doctor, some of them, because they had been blocked with trees. In almost every regard, the reasons that they have cited for this dismissal have been specious. I am confident that as we pursue the facts, we will understand that there were consequences consequences of the release of geothermal toxins. Based on this, the most important effort needed is to understand the problems caused by the recent release and to treat those that have been harmed. The health study you are considering today is basically an epidemiological study that uses remnants of health effects to determine if there have been health effects. I recommend that we briefly delay this effort as we learn about the consequences of 7 August. Then we can incorporate what we learned by investigating this, this incident into the health study to be sure that we spend the $750,000 the best way we can. Thank you for your time, and I'm sorry I went over it. Hello. Uh, um, I'm Laura Travis, a retired registered nurse and member of the Geothermal Public Health Assessment Working Group. And I've been working to document health complaints follow, following the landfall of Tropical Storm Azale on August 7th. I think we need to understand what happened that night and additionally address how we can help the people affected. Learning the lessons from what happened is most important. I have a statement that I would like to read that is from uh, Dr. Sally Boyd, um, who just has a statement, so I'm just going to read it. Um, to whom it may concern, I'm a physician with a naturopathic practice in Pahoa, Hawaii. Our offices provide general primary care to residents of the greater Puna area. I am writing to provide a general report on the events and types of injury we have seen in our practice since the storm and geothermal event on August 7, 2014. Our office was closed with no phone service at all immediately after the storm for a period of three full days. In addition, many of our patients had no power or phone for several weeks after the event and were physically unable to get to the office to make their appointments or to make new appointments. Therefore, it is most likely that the following reporting is significantly underrepresentative of the number of patients impacted by the event who needed care. What we did notice most is that as soon as our patients were able to call and physically arrive at the office, they did so in high numbers. This surge of patients reporting similar symptoms began as soon as the office was fully reopened, approximately seven days after the event. The increase in patients with related symptom clusters continues to this day. We have documented 10 new and returning patients who report significant similar symptom sets which began acutely following the storm and geothermal gas release. 
In addition, about 25% of all returning and new patients who live in lower Pune area report these symptoms as new events, but pre present to the office for other primary issues, such as colds, flu, hormone issues, depression, etc. Those who were closer to the geothermal plant the night of August 7 tend to report the most severe symptoms. Symptoms reported include loss of consciousness or severe lethargy immediately following the gas release lasting one to three days. This symptom was limited to those within approximately a mile of the plant. Depression, <coughs> severe irritability, labile mood, inability to focus, short-term memory loss, irrational behavior, conjunctivitis, red swollen watery eyes, sinusitis, sore throat, dysphagia, chest pain, significant skin changes including dry, pale facial skin and circles under the eyes, tachycardia and palpations, increases in existing hypertension, uh, lung pain and shortness of breath with wheezing, increased tactical primitives, Coughing and dry wheezing, sometimes with secondary upper respiratory infection symptoms and pneumonia. A severe and distinct form of fatigue with restless legs, vague joint pains, muscle cramps and twitching and insomnia, sweating and feeling of overheating, sometimes alternated with cold sweats and foul distinctive smelling sweat. Dramatic increases in fatigue and other symptoms in hypothyroid and auto autoimmune patients and those with other already existing hormonal issues. Many of these symptoms decrease in intensity over time, but have not dissipated in these patients. I would be happy to work with you further in any capacity needed to assist these patients and the community in general with this issue. Feel free to contact me. Uh, I'm just, sorry. Uh, anyway, um, I just want to say that we are thankful that the county is addressing health issues. A health study is needed, and I ask you to help make this study as useful as possible by incorporating what we learn. My name is Dave Kaiser. I, I live at 14 TAC 3444 Tutu Lane, Pahoa, which is actually a non Bali stage. My cat Thunderball and I, uh, I know we were both hit with this stuff because I was pretty sluggish. He's a four-year-old tomcat. He's full of piss and vinegar. He's been running around like, a, like the old kitten he is. And he's been laying down like pretty much sluggish. I was sluggish. As, well, there are times I couldn't even get out of bed. I wanted to. I'd, I'd just say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, after a while, I forced myself. After a couple of times, I had to roll over like I was pushing a barrel off a pier to get out of bed. And it was like, wait a minute. I used to be climbing up burned out hill slopes when I was doing forest fire research for the Forest Service. I wasn't doing anything to get tired. So this stuff, you get hit with a dose. I, I didn't smell it, but I know because there was a fire up around Forest Avenue, Forest Road. That's about two years ago. And that opened up an air channel from the highway, because when the air was coming in, and you know it follows a path of least resistance. You know, it just takes a road cut, comes up, and that's how people in Nanavali got here. And I noticed there was another couple of people on that map that Tom presented. But now that was just how I, I, I figured, because last year, my friend Louise, she was out walking her two dogs. I was on the other side of town. I didn't get hit when, they, when the plant had their release. That March 13 debacle with the tree trimming and the com somebody's computer went, oops, I gotta shut off this other line so PG begins to uh, shut down and release. And they did. And the next day I saw her and she didn't know why she felt like she'd been clobbered. Just before she'd been given a clean bill of health, her lung, past lung capacity, went in, she came down with two collapsed lungs. I mean, she could barely breathe. And that was the same result. Now this is why we need this study. Ha, but like others have mentioned, we don't want to just throw money. That seems to be the you know standard response. Throwing money at, at, a, at a problem will will you know is, we'll, so, we'll solve the solution. We'll solve it. It doesn't usually do that good. But anyway. But I'll compensate for some of those who have rambled on and I, I know I can. I ramble well. I'll just leave this for the next group. And thanks for having me share. Could I have uh, Ronald 
How many? How many? Harry, Kim, <coughs> Harry, Kim, Sophia, Will, and Chris Duffin. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth on this matter now before the Hawaii County Planning Commission? Please state your name and residence. My name is Ronald Hansen. I've lived in Laniapuna Gardens for more than 10 years. I've always thought that the geothermal power plant had a really good safety procedure. I've talked to the people at the plant before, trying to make sure that some of the rumors I'd heard about the health issues were not true, even though my wife uh, passed away last year of health issues I'm not sure is related to the, the geothermal, and several of the, my neighbors have been sick for several years. Um, I thought that a lot of these health issues were not related to the geothermal power plant. However, on the 7th of August, I experienced with Peggy, my girlfriend, um, severe problems with breathing. A short time after we heard the sound like jet or rocket engines going off at the power plant. I've heard those jet engines sound several times in the past. past. I was not overly concerned at that time that we would be exposed to a lot of um, hydrogen sulfide. I thought their procedures were in place to protect the neighborhood. And since that time, I've been to some meetings that said the safety procedures for uh, an emergency shutdown is to vent gas to the neighborhood. At the present time, I think that all the safety features, except one major feature of safety, were down at the time. The system that did work was gas was vented into the neighborhood. If it would not have been vented, the plant could possibly have exploded and made something near a quarter mile crater, deep and wide. So that system did work. The monitors, the scrubbers, the other things did not work at that time. One of the main reasons I came here to testify today is I don't want to see the neighborhood continually getting gas. And I want something to be done so that that can never happen again. But like I said, I've, I've heard um, sound like jet engines several times in the past. I've heard people complain about the hydrogen sulfide. But until you experience it personally, you really don't believe how bad it is. I'm also of the conclusion that another health study at this time, you've got a lot of people out there that's sick. People aren't being admitted that they're sick and affected with this gas. And I, I question whether it would be good to have a health study of the type, <coughs> type that you have proposed at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Harry Kim. I reside in 471 Okina Place in Hilo, Hawaii. I thank you for your time. I don't blame anybody here in the panel or the audience of not being confused. Uh, if you have been listening to radio or newspaper, reading newspaper accounts to what has happened, and here you have uh, a lot of people testifying in regards to negatives that happened. How can you on the board not be confused when PGV, Department of Health, have stated in writing and verbally and a community presentation that nothing has happened and not, no threat was made uh, to the people of Hawaii. If you want discrepancy, you don't have to go that far, and I wish we could speak for an hour or two to show you just discrepancies of information. And number one, go back to about a little over a year ago, March 13 release. PGV stated that their monitors showed no more than 30 parts per billion or so. The hazmat people of the fire department reported one to two million parts per mil. 
Uh, that alone tells you discrepancies in regards to who says what. I am against the county government funding this health study. I hope all of the people who are behind me you know, will understand why. Number one, I do not feel it will do what they want it to do. Number two, I don't think you have enough money in your kitty to cover the cost of a thorough health study. And number three, I think the situation is that we must have a very complete study in regards to the operations as well as the health effects. Uh, Senator Schultz was approached that if he would approach the CDC to begin that task. And he complied with that request by writing a letter to CDC uh, in regards to begin that task of looking at what's happened here. When I leave, when I left the job in the county government, whether it be civil defense or mayor, I was asked by a reporter how, how, I, how I felt about my time. And I told him my greatest failure, I've had a lot of failures like most people, I guess, but my greatest failure in government as a government employee was to do my job of protection of an environment of people because of the geothermal failure. Our state government passed Act 97, which took away 100% of the county authority in regards to control of geothermal. The same state government, with the support of the county government, tried to eliminate all EIS, EAS requirement for all exploratory drilling. Act 97, which is an act, which therefore by law, allows geothermal exploration anywhere on this island of Hawaii, including urban, rural, and ag lands. I want you to just think about that. They took away 100% of the planning responsibilities and ordinances governing this island so that people of geothermal can do as they please, and our state government and county government supported it. What I'm asking for now, and I know there's a PGD representative behind me, what is wrong with all of us embracing totally the support of CDC and EPA coming here and doing a thorough study of what has happened? I would like to have the permit revoked until that is completed, but that's not within your authority. But please understand, it is not against the study. It is to achieve what must be. Why would PGV oppose it? Because if this, what they say has been right all the time, the study will show it by EPA and CDC. So I'm asking for your support. Postpone the granting of these funds until we see if we can be successful in getting EPA and CDC to come here as they did after 1993, uh, 1990 blowout. Thank you for your time. Thank you. My name is Sophia Wilt. I live at 133362 Makamai Street, Leilani Estates. I'm less than one mile from the geothermal. I'm also topographically in a depression. Um, the night of the storm, similar experience to many. I heard explosions. Um, I didn't know what was going on. There was no radio service of any kind. I heard about it through Facebook from a friend. Um, I was panicked. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't leave my property. There was a tree across my driveway. Um, I was gassed and I was knocked unconscious. The following morning, I woke up and felt like I had been hit by a two by four. Uh, a few days later, I went to my doctor and was diagnosed with reactive pneumonia reactive as in response to a toxin or pathogen. I um, am extremely grateful for the Punapono Alliance being a resource because I noticed curiously following the storm all the radio announcements would tell you where to get ice and what kind of place to um, get free water but there was nothing for people that were gassed. There was no information. The civil defense and PGV were noticeably silent. I started attending meetings and learned a lot. Um, I was one of the first people that was sent to the emergency room for a blood draw and a urine sample. I recently spoke to my physician on Tuesday to review those results, and they were more or less inconclusive. Um, the five days lapse time from um, collecting that information made them basically null and void. I spoke to two physicians and they confirmed that. So I feel like there's been extremely valuable time lost 
from August 7th to where we are now, um, many of us, the, the immediacy of what happened has been lost, and that's unfortunate. Um, I do feel that we need a comprehensive health study. I also feel, like Harry Kim, that digging deeper in involving the CDC and the EPA would be uh, definitively a good route. I also um, would like to point out how odd it was for the Department of Health to publish an article in the Tribune Herald saying that um, there was no issue, even though, um, as we know, uh, about 100 or so of us have complained of ill effects. They never interviewed anybody. The monitoring systems were down. I don't know how they made such a determination based on so little information. Um, I'm also uh, applied for the relocation program in 2012, and I recently found out um, I've been wanting to move as soon as possible for my residence because I can't go through another incident like happened on August the 7th, and found out in order to uh, benefit whenever that might happen from the relocation program, I have to occupy my house. So I find that very ironic that I have to stay in my house and potentially go through what I went through on August 7th. So I think that aside from the health study, we need to um, address some regulatory issues that should happen. Thank you. Hello, I'm uh, Chris Biltoft, 14-5001 uh, Ho'olai Road, Kapoho uh, Vacation Land in Ho'olai. And uh, I'm a meteorologist. Uh, I understand that we're before your, uh, for your consideration is the uh, RFP for a health study. Uh, I uh, tried to contribute uh, to this RFP. I've provided information and suggestions and whatnot. Uh, I, I, I really don't know what is in this uh, RFP. I've not had an opportunity to actually see it. Uh, I hope you have. I, I have not uh, seen the thing. So it, it's kind of difficult for me or anyone else to really comment uh, uh, relevantly on, on the, something that we uh, have not seen and cannot see. But in any case, uh, hopefully in the RFP there is a, the possibility of doing a retrospective uh, dispersion modeling to try to establish what uh, sorts of uh, gas concentrations were uh, put out at certain times during various releases. Uh, that would be a very uh, a useful thing to do. But uh, currently, you know, this, uh, this current uh, 7, uh, 8 uh, August uh, blowout has, uh, has been a bit of a game changer. Now there is a whole new uh, class of people who uh, have been uh, allegedly exposed to various uh, toxic gases. And so, you know, the health study, as it is written now, probably, uh, needs to be re-examined. And uh, we need to take advantage of this, uh, the information that is coming in now about this latest release, and we look at the design of the health study and perhaps uh, gain something from the uh, experience that these people have had. So uh, that's, that's my suggestion before the group. Uh, that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Do we have uh, Corey? Yeah. Corey? now before the Hawaii County Planning Commission? Yes. So please state your name and residence. I'm Corey Harden, 874 Kulaloa Road in Hilo. And I'm just horrified at what I'm hearing about what people went through the night of August 7. Um, I think we need to find out what were the health effects from August 7 in addition to the long-term health effects. Um, perhaps the county study could do a piece and Maybe the CDC could do a more thorough study. Um, we also need to find out what the, was the responsibility of PGV, Helco, um, 
Civil Defense and Department of Health. For example, why didn't Civil Defense um, order Helco and PGB to have the plant shut off before the storm, just temporarily during the storm? That would have prevented all this. But it sounds like private interests made the decision to keep it open, and it sounds like that should have been a government decision. Um, I'd also like to know why does Punapono have to do the job that government should be doing? Why are they having to collect all this data and show that there's a problem? I mean, people elected to represent the people should be, you know, representing and protecting them. I would like to know how come Bob did, could not see the RFP for today's health study. I would like to see the permits looked at again and revised to protect people. And after this, we just, we cannot go back to business as usual. Thank you. Thank you. I'll let you take a five minute recess. Based on the scope of work uh, required and a review of comparable studies in other places, the amount requested is $750,000 over three years uh, as required by the Geothermal Asset Fund rule. Uh, the request was submitted to claims adjuster for review and recommendation. Uh, upon approval by the Wimber Planning Commission and following procurement procedures, the RFP will be distributed locally and nationally to solicit proposals from researcher teams with expertise and experience in conducting these types of community health studies. Um, we do anticipate an award in the first quarter of next year, uh, assuming everything goes well. 
uh, and the asset, geothermal asset fund currently contains about $1.96 million. So the, the fund is adequate to, to cover this research. Um, Jeff here can update you on the other four requests um, that total $293,000, a little bit more than that, uh, that this panel has already approved, including air monitoring equipment and so on. Um, and with that, I guess I'll um, open it up to any questions if that's appropriate. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Dayton, uh, is it true that the Adler Group members weren't um, given access to the RFP? Uh, I'm going to pass actually to Jeff the specific um, details of that process, yeah? Um, no, that's not true. Um, what we did was uh, we started when we hired um, Jay, we went out and re-pulled that group back in. We had three meetings with them, three drafts over a period of time. They brought really good insight to the, to the guts and scope of that RFP, including what the key questions are, what are we really trying to solve here, what are the evaluation criteria, what, how do you weight evaluation, how do you, how will you really evaluate it. So we had three meetings at the end of which we said, okay, now we've got the gut of this piece, and then we send it to procurement, and procurement now put it into the boilerplate form and it's being reviewed by the court council. So at this moment, they've been trying to get a hold of the, of the, final RFP and their procurement concerns about whether or not, because you begin to circulate an RFP before you've actually, um, you know, it, it's an uneven playing field that needs to go out at one time uh, as a piece. Um, my review of it, all of the issues, all of the wording that was in it is still in it. Uh, the only difference is we agreed in our review to actually what the evaluation committee would look like, and that just doesn't appear in the committee, but it was something that Jay said, let's have a conversation about, because let's make that clear up front. How, what does the evaluation committee look like? We came to an agreement on that, but the actual numbers of people there um, isn't generally in an RFP. But other than that, every bit of the wording was in that. The rest of the wording is just, our, is just standard boilerplate. Uh, so there's just concern about passing that back out and having it circulate and then find its way into different uh, conversations before there's a level playing field for offering. So that's, the truth is, the three meetings specifically shape that scope and develop the pieces, lots of back and forth, lots of good ideas, really appreciate their input, and they made it a better RFP guaranteed. So uh, that's, that's the history. Uh, I'll just throw this out to the panel. Um, I'd like your thoughts about some of the testimony we've heard this afternoon that uh, this might be premature given the recent uncontrolled discharge. Whoever wants to hear more. You know, I had, had the opportunity to listen to all the testimony. I think obviously um, this changes a, a bit of what we've looked at, but when you look at the study and what's written in here, um, we were looking for a, uh, somebody to come in and do a study that looks at both uh, cumulative low level exposure plus peak exposure. And we were thinking mostly about the 91 blowout, but obviously anyone that did the study would include uh, the August 7th. Uh, it is written in here that any additional work that's done on monitoring that's done on airflow would have to be included in their study, so ongoing work. I know there's been a long delay in getting the studies probably you know, 20, 30 years too late. Um, you know, and there will continue to be, as long as the plan is open, probably events. And um, I think by delaying, I'm not sure what you add, and you get a lag that goes longer and longer, so that the more recency you have uh, in the study to when there was an event, the easier it would be to detect the health events. So, I don't see a benefit um, scientifically from delaying this thing. But what about the idea of uh, investigating the possibility of bringing in CDC and or EPA to give us uh, an idea of what we're looking at here before we fund this study? Uh, I, uh, thank you for the question. Um, I was just talking about Patrice um, before this, before coming up here, and that suggestion of their involvement, uh, first I heard of it was today, and I haven't spoken with the mayor about it, but I'm 
pretty confident that he would welcome their involvement, their research, um, their inquiry, if that's something that um, they intend to do, if that's something the community feels is appropriate. Um, I'm not sure, I'll, I'll defer to Jay, I guess, as to how that might inform this particular study, but their involvement would be welcome, I'm sure. Sure. If the CDC was to come out, they would be looking specifically at the August 7th blowout. I'm looking at the peak exposure and the effect on health, which um, is very different than the long-term, low-level accumulative exposure, which includes the heavy metals and, and some of the other issues. So I think they would actually complement each other, and obviously if CDC came out, that would be a benefit to the community. And, and uh, forgive me for um, my lack of experience in this, but how does this process work? Uh, we're, we're putting out this RFP. Um, the, do we get any time along the process to, to watch how it's being shaped or who's, who's going to respond to it? How, how does it work? How do we, uh, I'm trying to make sure that we get value for the amount of money you're asking us to invest into this. At some point, this becomes a procurement process, and it um, there is you, know, you follow procurement law to how you um, how you do this. The study, the way the RFP is structured, it's really structured around a city a set of core questions. What are the things we're really trying to solve for, and um, and asks the app the responder to provide detailed. Uh, sense of how they would, what science would they bring to it, what kind of uh, context would they shape, what kind of science would they shape to do their study with. So, um, in the evaluation committee, you select people who have expertise in that area, who have specific expertise around epidemiology, uh, um, the way we've talked about this process is it would be a combination of community members, that by law has to be three county members on that committee, and then a series of PhDs who have expertise in that area. And the group was very clear about wanting to make sure that there was good science and good background in the evaluation process. So whether you know, the role of the planning commission, which is I think what you're asking, uh, Commissioner, is, um, is a complex review process. I don't know how you would go about including the commissioner's consideration of applications. Um, I, I frankly don't see a way that the commission would necessarily be involved in the evaluation of the proposal. But the goal is to find as much uh, as much qualified expertise to provide a professional judgment on which one of these studies makes the most sense, which one of these proposals makes the most sense. Does that answer the question? Uh, it it helps me. Yeah, is um, is this an all or nothing situation? Because um, if if we happen to you know not recommend it, go for a delay, is is this money not going to be used for a study, or is something are you guys going to come up with something else? I you know I live in the area just a few miles down from Field Thermal. I've been impacted you know nine more recent activities too, and I'm really sympathize with. But I'm also the kind of guy that, you know, if you, if you offer me a cupcake now or a cupcake in a half hour, I just tell you the cupcake now because I don't want to have a cupcake in a half hour. I would hate to, um, you know, try to delay this funding and then and have, it, have it not be available at all. So I'm just helping out here. Uh, I think the, the reason that's before you today is that there is there's a strong desire on the part of the community for many years now to get to the bottom of this in some sense, to, to get a scientific inquiry and to get it moving, and I think you heard that in some of the testimony today. Um, honestly, I, I remember sitting through a, a meeting before this commission a little while ago when the county was in fact scolded for not moving quickly enough on this, and I understand the frustration. I've, I've listened to concerns about geothermal since the 90s. I think all of us have. Um, so, you know, would we give up and walk away? No, but, but I think this is something that the community has been asking for for a very long time. And frankly, you know, the mayor feels it's the right thing to do. And it's, 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 a, it's a well thought out process, a well thought out study, and it's, it's appropriate. Am I answering your question? Well, yeah, but I mean, what we're hearing here today is that, that a month ago was a game changer. You know, 
I think I often told one of them everybody who said, yeah, let's do the steady. It's way too late, better late than never. But, but uh, I'm comfortable with the game changer. And I think that's what a lot of the conservatives out there right now no, I think the, the issue really is we can't go out to, to bid at all until there's money in, in, enabled to do it. So this is an enabling app. The, um, the RFP is not a final RSP if the community or, the, or if we feel like it needs to have some additional thoughts to it. So I mean, I think there's, um, you know, I don't speak for the mayor's office, but if there were specific ideas that could be added to the, to the scope that would be integrated to it, that makes sense. Um, I think, like Dr. Maddox said, the, um, the structure for that concern, for addressing the concern of the most recent event, is already in it. It's not a very specific RFP. It doesn't detail a lot of the details. It gives you the general context, and you have people come and give you their best science. So I think delaying only sets us, sets the process back, and it doesn't, um, it doesn't going to accomplish anything different than just kind of opening the door for some additional thoughts to add to the RFP. It's not a locked down piece, but we thought we'd gotten it down based on the agreement of the community, and then the events happened, and so what science could you do? I haven't heard that science piece yet, but all of that is, I think, intended to be part of the next step, is to uh, include these kinds of events as part of the uh, study basis. One more question. Do you, do you think it would be possible for some of the, the people that have been you know, gathering their own data, like the Puno Photo Alliance, Alliance, to take part in the implementation of this so that they can help do the shaking that you're talking about? As well? um, I, I think both Bob and Tom were, have attended all of those sessions, shaped the existing RFP that's, that's there today. Um, and if they have additional thoughts, then they, they should you know, bring them forward. I think there's not a there's specific ways. They have the draft of the RFP that we worked on and the content of it, the real heart of it. So if there are additional thoughts and specific pieces of it, let's hear it. Let's, you know, let's, the purpose is this is to make this the best thing we can do. We're trying to get to the best science in the best way, in the most responsible way, so that at the end it doesn't become one person's study or another, but it becomes the best way to get to the topic. And having Jay help us do this has been a big part of getting that clarity and understanding what this is. This is out of our wheelhouse as government employees in many ways. Very helpful to do that. So, um, you know, I think the goal is not speed, but to get it right. This action is really about just, is the money available to do it? Is this a reasonable expenditure of geothermal asset funds money? And if it is, then let's go ahead and do it, and let's make sure when we get it done that we do it as, as, in the very best possible way. Any further questions, Commissioners? Geothermal public health study as it appears fair, reasonable, and appropriate to this 
description of the plane and will benefit a majority of the Puna residents most directly affected by the activity permitted or not permitted by Geotomo Resource Permit Number 2. Any other motions, Commissioners? Could you clarify the motion that's on the floor? The motion to deny? The, well, the first motion was to approve. I withdrew that and then submitted a motion to deny um, until a, an alternative plan can be drawn up. I'd like to move it to uh, go into executive session. The second? Second.
commissioners, um, is there any further discussion? Not I'll accept the motion. Um, I'm going to move that we accept the claim adjuster's recommendation and to award $750,000 from the Geothermal Asset Fund to conduct a geothermal public health study as it appears fair, reasonable, or appropriate to the description of the claim will benefit a majority of Pune residents most directly affected by the activity permitted or not permitted by geothermal resource permit number two with the additional request to seek input from the Center for Disease Control and the Environmental Protection Agency and with an annual report to this commission uh, on the status of the RFP. A second. Motion by Commissioner Hezbollah and seconded by Commissioner Hinko. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, I'll call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Henkel. I mean, sorry, Commissioner Hialkulani. Aye. Commissioner Henkel. Aye. Commissioner Moses. Aye. And uh, Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman, motion carries with four aye votes. Seven on the agenda.